previously on East Charmer. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and for today's video, I will be configuring a Cisco switch that we have unboxed in the last video and I will be showing you what you need to configure a Cisco switch and also the commands that we will be using and maybe I'll show you how we will rack the switch later on in the video as well. So in this video, I will be sharing with you tips on configuring switches in the real world, best practices, what we actually do in the workplace. So if you're interested in this video, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started. So this is our Cisco switch, it's a Cisco Catalyst 9300 with 48 ports that is managed and stackable and has PoE. So what we need to configure this is a console cable. Just make sure that you're going to have the proper ports that you can connect to the switch to your laptop so you can access it. There's different kinds of console cables that I discussed also in my previous video. We also need a flash drive where we are going to import the config file for all of the commands that will be running and we will be saving in the switch. So if you are using a USB, make sure that you convert it to FAT32 first. So there's different ways on configuring a switch. You can use a TFTP server and just import the config files from the network. I am going to use the USB because it's. I think it's faster. I don't have to rely on my network and I don't have to set up my network. I can just plug in this USB to the switch and it will just import the config files quickly. And also just make sure that your Cisco switch supports USB because some of them you might have to configure to like support or detect the USB. So just make sure that it's FAT32 before you put in the config file and that it supports USB. Also, we are gonna need the laptop to connect the switch to the laptop when you are starting our configuration because we are building this from scratch. It doesn't have anything on it yet. So we need we need to be able to access the switch. So for now, we are not able to SSH to it. We, we don't have an IP address for it yet. We can't do it remotely. So we will need a laptop for now. And of course, it needs to connect to the network when we are configuring it. So make sure that your network port is, your switch port is configured correctly if you're gonna use trunking make sure it has DHCP or on the management VLAN and whatever it is that their company has for the configuration to be able to configure this properly so this is gonna be my first time building a physical switch on my own I have watched people do it at work and I never had to do it in my previous jobs I've only configured on simulation like packet tracer gns3 so i'm kind of nervous actually i hope i don't mess this up you won't be able to break it because it's new we can just start from scratch and probably like flash and wipe whatever wrong config we have if we really mess this up so it's gonna be a fun learning process i'm gonna be learning a lot i have shadowed people who have done this so hopefully i can do this by myself of course our lab is a mess but what we need to do first is to plug it in of course to power it on and this is the two power supplies for this and also realistically if we are building this switch from ground up from scratch from the start we are not going to be typing all of the commands manually because that will be probably tedious and it is faster and more accurate if you just import the config files. And if you work in a bigger company, the config files are probably provided to you by the network engineering team, the networking team. We didn't really create this config file. It was just provided to us and we will just change it or, or make changes to it. Uh, changing the IP address for the switch and the host name. I think that those are the main changes that we have to do. But the rest, everything will be provided already and we will just have to import and copy it to the startup config. Okay, so the switch is initializing and you can hear like noises. I think it's going through 
the hardware initialization process. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this USB console cable. There are different kinds of console cable that are DB9 to RJ45. So this is, I think, easier for me because we have the laptop where we need to connect to and the newer switch, I guess, has the mini USB in front that you can use just easily and it's plug and play. You don't have to insert like adapters for it. Okay, so before we putty in, let's check device manager first because we are going to be connecting through the serial port and if you scroll down to the ports, common LPT in here, you would see serial device connected. So this is the port that we are going to be using to connect to our switch, COM3. So now we can putty into the switch and change our serial settings in here to COM3 because that is what we have listed in our serial device and then go to the session select serial COM3 should be selected and then if you open you should be able to access the switch and see what it's doing now so now it's initializing hardware so we also need what's called an SFP that stands for small form factor pluggable and this is a connector that you can use on switches there are different kinds there's electronic and optic for fiber and ethernet and the one that we're going to use this time is the one that looks like this it's an RJ45 connector where we can connect our cat cable so we can get internet on our switch so the SFP will be plugged in in the two slots in front of the switch and you can connect your cat cable so you can get network so after you power on the switch it does a lot of setup like bootstrap and it checks the backup and vram if there's configuration save to it it defaults the boot config that is used a lot of auto installation and it will ask you to terminate the auto install also then after the initial configuration the switch asked me to set up an enable password for it and then i will be inserting the usb flash drive now where the config files are and this will show that the flash drive will be mounted and added to the switch so we're now able to access all of the files in here now I've typed in this command to copy this file. This is the approved OS version of the switch from our company. So it can be installed and this will be copied to the flash. The Cisco flash memory is what is used to store the iOS of the software images for the switch. So the only changes that we have to do in the config file is to change the host name. And the command to change the host name is hostname space the name of the switch. And we also have to edit the IP address with the command IP space address and the IP address space the subnet mask. Then once we have edited our config file, the next step would be to copy the config file from the flash drive to the running config. So the command will be copy space USB flash zero where the flash drive is mounted and the file name of the config file space running config. Okay, so just a refresher, running config is stored in RAM, which means that commands copied there will be lost after a restart. So after we have copied the config file to the running config, we should also save the file into the startup config so it will be stored in NVRAM and won't be lost after a restart. Now I'm just verifying our configuration by running this command show int status to see all of our interfaces if they were configured. And of course, running the show run command shows us all of the configuration in the switch. We have all of the VLANs, all of the interfaces with their description and configuration. So everything that was in the config file should be in the running config. Okay, so now that I've configured the IP address, I should now be able to SSH to it so we can test it out by puttying into the IP address. Okay, so I have finished configuring the switch. I'm now able to SSH to it and I've checked the configuration with the verification commands and I think that I should be all set. And I am going to show you how we are going to wrap this and connect it to the router and patch it. 
after so watch out for that video if you're interested so that will be the next step so after configuring this it's cracking and then moving all the old connections from the old switch to this new switch so i'll see you guys in the next video thank you so much for watching